Hello everyone. Okay. And uh, today is uh, uh, first uh, the first session. I'll be giving a lecture on how to use XCMS uh, for untargeted metabolomics. So uh, this is uh, standard slides. Okay. So how many of you have used R before? Not okay. Not because of this one. Just uh, for uh, okay. And how many of you have already used XMS in your research? Have the experience? Okay. Good. So uh, XCMS is a R package. It's very popular and very flexible. So uh, the purpose of this uh, uh, this section is try to first get familiar with R programming language, and uh, Bioconductor is a is a uh, big package that com comprise of a lot of R packages and for bioinformatics. And uh, in, it very useful for in general for a lot of uh, other uh, use, including microarray, which is mainly developed for, and now it's metabolomics and pro proteomics. So uh, learning R as uh, one uh, objective, just the uh, uh, basic R commands and familiarize yourself with how to interact uh, with uh, from the command line. And as the second goal is to uh, learn about XCMS and uh, how to deal with uh, different uh, input format. So XCMS is very flexible. And uh, today we're just really going to cover the basics. And there's a more advanced and uh, uh, more customized an analysis. You should go to the uh, forum. Or we also posted a, a, a tutorial and tutorials. And uh, you should just uh, Check that for the more advanced one. It will cover almost the whole day if we really go to that detail. And uh, the third objective is uh, for uh, basically the raw spectra is very big, and uh, uh, a lot of people uh, want to upload the uh, uh, raw spectra to be uh, used on Metabo Analyst, which is another uh, very popular software for statistical analysis. Uh, but it, because of the the size of the file is so big, you cannot do it. One option is to try to first uh, process your spectra and convert it into a peak list table, which will be more compatible, so you can upload to a metabolist. So this is a, a three objective for uh, this section. So I already uh, covered a bit about uh, what is R and uh, what is a bioconductor. And, uh, Basically, if you guys uh, know about Perl and BioPerl, this is quite similar to, uh, to that. But uh, the focus in R is statistical analysis and the data visualization. And uh, uh, especially quite popular for, uh, so Perl, for example, is quite good at uh, text processing, sequence analysis. But R is a lot of, uh, I mean, in terms of statistics, a visualization R is just superb, and there's uh, I don't see any alternatives uh, just competing with uh, uh, with this capability in terms of programming language. So it's really worth it. You start learn it and just spend more time with it, and it will going to benefit you a lot in uh, terms of your data analysis and uh, uh, other project really uh, need to analyze the data. Uh, the limitation, and a lot of people eat for beginning, for beginners, it complains about uh, it's hard to learn because uh, if you if you know a little bit about Java, Java programming language is very neat, and uh, and it's a lot of programming uh, support. So if you commit some syntax error, it will highlight and tell you it's wrong, and it ha and suggest a different uh, uh, what's the correct way. But for R, you basically you start programming either direct from command line, if you hit button, you just get error. So, or you just uh, write your script in your text file. And uh, there's no much uh, good editor help you to uh, highlighting and uh, help you complete your uh, command. So it's kind of uh, hard for beginners. And uh, also the other one is uh, mainly command line driven. There's some packages uh, allow you to use a GUI interface to do that. Uh, but uh, I think it's intentionally uh, to be command line driven because it's flexible and immediately you will see the result. So it is a hurdle, but once you're over that, you'll enjoy it. So uh, this is uh, my personal uh, experience with R. 
now we uh, come to XCMS. XCMS, uh, I think it first released in 2005, 2006. And it, it is about the first open source uh, uh, software to process in uh, LCMS spectra. It said it's XCMS because it can be easily adapted also for GCMS, so it said it's X. But in this course, we're just going to use the, uh, what they designed for uh, initially is for LCMS uh, spectral analysis. Um, by that time, it's probably the only one uh, open source and in R, so it's a lot of people starting just improve on that and uh, uh, asking the original author to add more functions. So it's a lot of activity going on and there's a big forum and people discuss and the email list and uh, so, so update release in 2005, it is, uh, it is basic support for XDM, XML and MZ data, uh, just parsing and pick, picking and alignment and doing basic analysis. Then uh, after, uh, I think it's three, uh, two years, then there's another algorithm developed by uh, Stephen Newman from uh, Max Planck. They add in uh, uh, sand wave feature de detection for more uh, high resolution uh, uh, mass spectra. Then uh, one year later, they add in this uh, MS, uh, tandem MS uh, support. Then, uh, then further on is obvi warp uh, more advanced uh, alignment. Uh, but for today, we're just going to cover the first one, is basic one. For the uh, other features, I just briefly comment uh, what's the parameter you to get there, but. Uh, uh, for the spectra we're using for today, it's uh, for, for the first one. So if you have spectra for the more uh, high resolutions uh, or MSMS, MS, you just uh, probably need to change parameters and you just uh, check manual. There's detailed manuals for if you have this type of data, uh, follow this path. So that's more advanced, but we're not going to cover for, uh, for that today. Uh, so th this is an overview of uh, how uh, to use uh, X XMS in your uh, metabolomics, uh, uh, untargeted met metabolomics uh, uh, approach. Uh, the first one uh, uh, is just you have your LCMS uh, spectra. Uh, this is a you you see probably from your uh, chromatograph. Then. Uh, XMS will first to extract ions. Uh, then you have to uh, uh, nonlinear alignment, and then align the uh, align the uh, ion chromatography. It looks like this. Uh, after that, you can do a simple uh, building statistical uh, test, such as t-test, and you just try to f find the significant features, and. Oh, today we are also going to cover if uh, you can save it to a big list table, you can uh, upload to a metabol analyst for more advanced uh, multivariate statistics. Uh, but but we, we would, for this section, we'll just briefly, uh, briefly cover how to use uh, build-in t-test to get the uh, most uh, different, uh, different uh, peaks. And uh, after you get these uh, peaks, this is uh, go back to your experiment. You can really see how these uh, features peaks, uh, how they their intensities were regarding uh, to different uh, samples, and you see the most promising ones. You can further do fragmentation and doing MS MS, MS and try to uh, identify. So XMS do support in tandem MS MS, but uh, this is uh, just a whole flow. But we're just going to uh, go through the uh, A, just from your spectra uh, to um, just uh, uh, di different differential express the uh, peaks. Now we come to uh, the programming part. So if you can open your, uh, if you want to follow, or it's, it's fine, or we can just go through the uh, slides first, then you can do it privately. I can just go walk around and help you. So this is a, a, a note for, for the code I, uh, I wrote on the slides. 
so that that a big band is means it's a common. So so R will ignore it. And the uh, arrow uh, to the uh, left side will be uh, to the right side will be the start of R command. When you type, you don't type the, this error. So you just type what's after that error. Uh, error. Okay. I hope uh, all of you have already uh, installed uh, other re required packages. So. Uh, so can I make a suggestion that we just follow along in the slides? There's not very many slides, and you explain everything about what each of the code yeah. needs, and then we do it. Yeah. Okay. Just because um, that's been my experience in R, that you're going to get the most out of it. You scribble down your notes in the code right now. Um, and, uh, and I can hand out even further code. Okay? Is that okay? Go ahead, Jeff. Yeah. So, uh, uh, so the total lines of code is probably 20 lines code. So I'm going to line by line and try to explain what it does and uh, uh, what's the expected output. And uh, uh, so make sure you just try it. And if you see some errors, you, you can see, just just bring it up and we just figure it out. So it's just, we don't really go to more uh, variety of advanced options. Just go focus on this line of code. And this is very basic. If you want to do more advanced, we can always just starting from here. Just make sure you understand what each step is uh, doing and uh, what's the available parameters if your data type is uh, kind of different. Uh, so the prerequisite for this session is you need to install XMS, and uh, we also have a test data set. This is uh, previously uh, shipped together when you install XMS, but uh, recently it's been separate package. It contains about uh, 12, uh, uh, 12 LCMS uh, uh, spectra in uh, CDF format. So using the source code, uh, uh, just con bioconductor, biocolite, you can install XMS and uh, then install the um, a data package. I hope you, are, you guys already did that. So. Now this is a, a overview of the command we, we are going to cover. So the first one is a, a talking about input. So XMS accepting open format, uh, mostly it's uh, NAND CDF, MZ XML, MZ data. So this is three format uh, X, uh, CMS uh, accept. So uh, for a lot of other manufacturer specific format, I think uh, most of them give the option you can save it to uh, CDF or uh, AIA format. You, there's such option you can save as and then you can uh, input to XMS. And uh, up to you, you have your data and saved on a folder, and you, then you can read into uh, uh, this XMS. The command is XMS set. It will try to do this pick picking, and uh, uh, it will take a while, uh, but it will you know, at least following this uh, uh, tutorial, you'll see a lot of. Output going on, print out on the screen, and it's busy. And depends on how big is the file or how re uh, what's the resolution of the spectra. It probably take a while. Then after you uh, get all the ticks read inside the XMS, and uh, uh, you will get a, a object, and uh, which is X X set ob object. Then you next step is uh, you need to group all these uh, ticks based on the retention time. And uh, after you group the peaks, and uh, uh, these peaks are, uh, if they considered from the uh, same compounds, you can really uh, try to recalculate the retention time and update the retention time, then to doing the regrouping. So this is an iterative uh, process. You can do it multi times and until you see uh, no further changes. Then, then after you do align, 
read in the spectra, align the spectra, and uh, the computer will have a kind of ideas, okay, where is all these peaks are, and they can retry to revisit your peaks that's been picked before, but it focus on these uh, uh, areas uh, to expecting on the, um, just try to look harder and try to identify the missing peaks. So this is a, a kind of very uh, niche uh, feature. So otherwise, you're going to have a lot of missing data in your um, in your data in the peak list table. So this will help just reduce that. Then after we get the uh, fill in the missing peaks, and we we can do some basic statistical analysis, and uh, this is just a simple t-test adjusted by this. Uh, uh, multi-test like uh, false discovery rate or bam bamperoni and uh, if, when you see uh, some peaks of interest and he, you can really visualize it based on the uh, retention time or, and, and the mass so this is a uh, uh, steps we are going to cover in the next few uh, slides so uh, this is all the commands all, almost all uh, the commands uh, you are going to use, uh, so it's not a lot. So we're just going to uh, going over one by one. So um, so this is a uh, this command has been a little bit highlighted. So it's uh, in line with the previous slides, which is about its uh, reading uh, reading spectra, along peaks. Sorry, can you use the pointer, please, Joe, just beside you? Yeah, so uh, I just briefly comment. Uh, so uh, this is you load your XML library, and here's a, a reading uh, path to your files. Uh, this is uh, your installed package, and here is the path. Uh, actually, when you have your own um, file, uh, not from package, you should specify uh, the directory uh, where it is to this uh, to your folder, and here is basically you see the uh, all the files, uh, uh, names, and the direct uh, absolute path where it, the way it is just to, uh, get this path, and now you start reading uh, all the files into XMS, and uh, at the meantime reading and picking picks. So this will this step will take a while if you have a lot of files. It's just to take. Uh, Quite long, and uh, then after reading, this is a grouping, basically based uh, grouping based on your uh, retention time, and this is uh, uh, after group you do retention time uh, correction, and uh, basically uh, this is regrouping to update retention time. So this process can 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 be iterated if it changes, so the update uh, change. And this, this step is just, uh, uh, after everything is set, it tries to fill the uh, missing peaks by revisit uh, this uh, area with this real peaks decided by previous st steps. And uh, um, this is one as a command, uh, as you get all the peaks at these ste uh, steps, and you can just uh, get all these uh, peaks, uh, peak intensities, and you can save it as a peak intensity table. And uh, basically, this is a uh, actual step is uh, put your uh, class labels and, and together with your peak intensity table. So, it, so you have your peak list table together with their labels. It is a mutant, it's not called, it is disease healthy. So it will have the right uh, format. Uh, then you can save as a .csv file. This is directly, this file can be used for metabolist and we covered in uh, module seven. So, uh, so you, yeah, you can, this last two slides, is, uh, last two commands is just for the purpose of uh, metabolist, but uh, we are also, uh, here is, yeah, that's the three commands, but we, we're, uh, we're also going to cover how to uh, do the uh, statistical analysis within uh, XMS and uh, visualize. It will be the last few slides. So.
So uh, this is a, a, in what's a format for uh, uh, an NCDF file. And most of you probably don't even bother to open it and say it, but uh, uh, majority of your, your machine uh, should have this uh, option to save to this uh, format. It is very popular and open format. So, and the XMS will pass this out, out and uh, get uh, things ready. You don't, you don't necessarily just open and view it. It's a very huge file. So, uh, for you, for you to uh, know, sometime at CDF, net CDF also called a uh, CDF, and uh, this is what used in this uh, in this uh, tutorial, which is the file sector as uh, dot CDF, and uh, other commonly also used is called the AIA. So in, this is uh, you can probably rename it. So if, in case if have troubles to so here is a uh, here is a, a command uh, used if your file is not for for our uh, tutorial we use the package one but this is this is command if you have your own spectra just save it on the, the current folder and name it your spectra or my spectra. And it will then this command will read all the files inside this uh, folder, and uh, if you after you're doing this and type this uh, CDF files, you will see each files all the names and the absolute path. And this is an uh, input for uh, XMS, so it knows all the files and their path. So this is for uh, for your own data. This is not for this section. This section is using the package one. I showed it before. So uh, uh, when, you, when we have the data ready, and the first, we give the command is xcms set, which actually try to uh, just read in the data and pass the data and uh, detecting the features or uh, peaks. So uh, for LCMS uh, data, it is uh, two-dimensional. One is mass, one is, uh, one is retention time. So what uh, XCMS does is try, try to first uh, uh, slice the whole spectrum at the at mass uh, dimension. So it's just if you just look at from the top, you'll see just like this, just slice uh, sl into small slices, and uh, then we just work work on each slice. So uh, this will be a, a one slice uh, from. Retention time. You just visualize. You see it before from here. We try to like this one slice. Uh, this slice here, and uh, some of the slice uh, slices are obvious. It's from uh, eluded from same uh, same compounds. And uh, based on your parameter, um, it will combine or merge these two. Uh, Merge the slices, not not necessarily two multiple slices. If it determined from the uh, same command, we will merge it into a one uh, one uh, chromatograph. And uh, then this the next one is called a f filter. So it was it it uh, it used a Gaussian secondary de de derivative to really uh, just calculate the boundary of this uh, um, of the peak and use this boundary to uh, uh, calculate the area of intensity. So uh, this is a kind of just what happened under, under hood. Okay. Oh, sorry. Uh, do you have any issues with, I just want to make sure I understand what you're saying. Do you have any issues with isotopes being picked up in that? So you're binning, you're binning in this case, it's point 0.1? Yeah. But can you bin up to like 2 or whatever you'd like? Yeah, you can try, and uh, sometimes if you see the, see the errors and you see the peak doesn't make sense, you have to readjust the parameter. So, uh, it's, it's sometimes if you change the parameter, you get a totally different result. So, uh, the only thing is just based on your column, based on how, how what's the resolution of yours. So, uh, 
GC and LC, if you use the same parameters, just totally, you can just get a result that makes sense. So it's, um, um, I, I think uh, using XM is the first one, is try to find the optimized parameter, which one gets the most uh, uh, reasonable result, then then just stay with it. So th this is a very difficult step. You just try to uh, uh, get the peaks and uh, visualize, compare with what you got from machine, and uh, until, okay, this is the most reasonable one, let's, let's stick with that. So uh, I think uh, between different machines, it's better different vendors, and the parameter can be quite different. And people just post their code for this type of machine, and the people just copy and use that work, they really try and post there. So it, it's a lot of very good tips online. So, so yeah, for, for today's uh, 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 exercise, and uh, we just use the default one. So what's the bandwidth, how determine which, how much to uh, combine them, and how to calculate, this is, uh, this should be, this will work fine. But for more uh, high resolution ones, probably you need to change parameters. But uh, there's, uh, there's quite a helpful forum to uh, give you uh, directions, or just send me, send me uh, emails if you have troubles. So, it's, so now we just go to this uh, <coughs> uh, uh, Code. If you are doing the command as uh, uh, we discussed before, and this is a uh, you first you get a path to the files, and now you're reading the pics, and while you read, you get its uh, uh, output from the command line. So this basically uh, will take a while, and for the tutorial, we have a very small data set, and it's probably finishing. Minutes depends on how how fast your computer. So uh, here's some uh, uh, tips for uh, important parameters. So some, mm, if you know, uh, for example, at the initial illusion uh, and this uh, that kind of spectra, you don't think it's of your interest. You can really restrict how, what's the scan range and exclude a certain regions, so you are folks um, more targeted. I just only interested in this particular retention time, you just put it here. And uh, this is a uh, uh, four widths at half length, and the second is a uh, specified uh, peak width you see on the, uh, on the GCLC. So it, the default, I think, for LC is 30 seconds. If you're using GC, probably, for five seconds, if, yeah, UPLC, I don't know, it's um, 12, uh, 15, you need to really try it out and uh, for your machine to, uh, to get a, just optimized for it. But uh, there's some initial guess and it do help you uh, uh, to start and see if you get some result. If you change, you get more peaks, or these peaks are meaningful, you probably, okay, just uh, go, go for that. So uh, for today, this is, this is uh, hidden. They, they do, uh, if you don't give it, it will use the default parameter. So you don't need to touch it, but in case in future you don't get a good result, this is a parameter you probably want to play with and try to do it. And uh, uh, this is a method, how to pick up the uh, peaks. Uh, one method that I just briefly mentioned about sand wave, it is for um, high resolution, probably uh, tall for uh, obi. Yeah, obi chap, but uh, this is we're not going to use this. This really takes uh, time, and uh, so uh, um, and then after we um, uh, reading all the files and uh, pick picks for from each spectra, and uh, the retention time calculated for each picks in each spectra will be. Uh, slightly different due to this retention time uh, drift. So you can, if you really try to overlay all these spectres and visualize, you will see like this. This is, uh, actually it looks nice, but some of them probably uh, shift it more. And all, all you want, because you want to compare peaks, you always want to uh, 
the peaks from the same command will compare to each, uh, compare to each other. So you want to align them, make sure the peaks compared is really uh, one spec to the other is it's talking about the same thing. You don't want to compare uh, compound peaks from compound A to peaks from compound compound B. That that's uh, that's what going to give you wrong uh, result. So th this is goal uh, to from uh, this uh, uh, unaligned to this uh, all totally aligned peaks. So the goal is to uh, match these peaks across all the samples, and uh, and then based on these uh, peaks, then they try to update the retention time. So uh, basically, rewrite the retention time for each spectra up to your group. Basically, update so they have the exact same retention time. So when you align them and compare them, you you'll um, just uh, you won't uh, you will compare. Uh, exactly at the same location, so it it is an iterative uh, process, and uh, uh, this is a command I already mentioned it before. So this one you can try uh, once and try twice, and you just <coughs> read the output and see if it updates. Yeah, um, and for the alignment is shifting or is it still happening, or is what is so yeah, this uh, if this is a um, for example twelve spectres, and each spectre, if you run through the column, it probably have slight uh, drift, so it won't perfect align to each other. You want to align them totally overlap, like uh, this, like a single spectre. So basically, you want they have exactly the same retention time. So when you compare, okay. so but the way that the software is aligning the the peaks is like you have a target and then you're moving the other one. Or shifting the other ones to, to have the alignment, or, or the peaks are wrapping, or how? The yeah, it's a very good question. Actually, um, at, uh, what XMS did is a non linear uh, retention time correction. So, what you're talking about is uh, warping and trying to align, that's another approach. But what XMS is, you give them a, a tolerance, basically, the bandwidth for the retention time. It'll try to group peaks into each group and then uh, update. <coughs> and so it's like, you have windows on this? Right? Yeah, it in initially starting from there. Uh, then try to update, but internally it's, uh, it's called non-linear. And uh, it's, it's not uh, what you're talking about, the warping and doing this. It it's, seems much faster memory efficient. The one you're talking about overall, uh, warping and doing this another approach, but it will really require huge memory you know, to do that. So, um, and tell you the fact, I don't know exactly how, how it works because this is one of the major success of XMS. So they do, but this, uh, yeah, uh, they do it fast and a reasonable uh, result. So it's uh, non-linear. So it's not changing the area of the, of the peaks? Oh, no, it shouldn't. <laughs> like, like, the, like the wrapping, because in the wrapping, they're changing the uh, No, I don't think so. So uh, uh, yeah, after we now we do, do the alignment, we doing we can do it run it as multiple times, and uh, uh, you see the output. If there's no updates, you basically it's fine. For for uh, for our uh, eight samples, it's it's probably uh, you just run once or twice. It will be quite stable. So this is a typical output uh, from the retention time alignment. And this is all, okay, there's 12 samples. And for each sample, there's different uh, uh, return time drift. I'll calculate for each time and just summary. And this is overall how it's been. Uh, uh, corrected, so it's. Now this is, uh, 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 after we uh, read the peaks, align the peaks, and then we Fill in the missing peaks, and uh, this is a, a very important one uh, <coughs> step because uh, 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 a spectra can be uh, can uh, sometimes you if you really just mm, align peaks and get the peak uh, list table, and you're going to notice a lot of peaks are not there, just missing. 
but if you really visualize your uh, spectra, you, you manually just visualize from your machine, you, you see something there. So it's, uh, so you always want to uh, uh, get max uh, information from your spectra. And, uh, but, you know, do, but XCMS can try to do it in a more automatic uh, way. Just this is uh, how they are doing it. Basically, you're doing this uh, peak peaking and retention time alignment and, uh, and uh, update the retention time. Then all the peaks are now aligned. And they, they can really, at this moment, when you have majority, they have the majority vote. Okay, here is a really, uh, should I expect to see a peak? And here's the boundary. So they will try to rescan and use a more uh, relaxed uh, threshold on this particular region and try to identify peaks. At this moment, since you already know uh, this, this is a place uh, you're likely to see peaks. So the false positive will be mi minimized. So it's a quite a reasonable approach. So this is basically a risk scan the raw spectra, try to uh, field. It's a very, just a simple command. You just redo the, uh, redo the uh, scanning on every pix on this uh, specific region of the missing pix, but in some, uh, in the pix missing in some spectra, but it's found in majority of others. So they will just revisit these regions of this spectra and try to uh, Fill it up. So, in you may notice some warnings. I know some of you complain. They say uh, warning is fine because uh, uh, some of the peaks uh, they find in spectra in one spectra. Probably the other spectra already beyond their end. So they complain. So okay, I didn't couldn't find it in the original spectra. So they will probably <coughs> just ignore it. This is uh, no. Normal, unless you, you, you scan your uh, spectra at the beginning, you just scan range and make sure all the spectra have within that range, then you will be fine. But uh, in this case, we just leave the default and then warning, just ignore them, it's, it's fine. Now we, we, uh, we are going to get a pick list and with the intention. In uh, retention time and uh, a mass, and uh, if you really see the peaks uh, from this object, uh, you give the command and you see the first uh, ten rows, and we will see the peaks M Z, the mm, mm, uh, left, the mean max and the retention time and. Uh, mean max and then here's a uh, intensity uh, is um, uh, original intensity there's a maximum uh, maximal or intensity so and uh, uh, this is a uh, oh this is all from sam sample one so if you really uh, just list the long list of uh, all from sample one to sample twelve, so it's going to be very long if you uh, see that. Uh, so uh, uh, XMS have a built-in uh, uh, function for doing differential uh, uh, analysis, which is a uh, 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 two sample t test and uh, rank them by p values. So it, it is uh, really easy. Once you got this uh, uh, data object, which is uh, one I've co comment about, this, this up you doing the filling peak, and you will get this one. Just okay. Yeah. You just get here, and uh, you're just doing a deep report, and put it here. And this is two class uh, two uh, class labels. One is wild type. One is knockout. And this is two, it will just uh, doing the t test with regard to these two, uh, uh, two classes. And uh, this is a, a report. You can save it and uh, visualize it, as vi uh, open it with ex Excel, uh, ex if you save it. But we can see what's inside this one. This is a, 
just the top uh, three rows and uh, all these um, columns. So it's a uh, Fold change, t statistics, and p values, and the uh, um, mz mean, max, and samples. So you see here is uh, this pix being found in all twelve samples, and uh, knockout six all, all six knockout samples and all uh, six wild types. So the second one you you see uh, this pix only found in. Uh, seven samples, and uh, uh, in all knockout, uh, six knockout, but only in one wild type. So this is uh, some interest, and uh, we can do a visualization later and see uh, see whether it's true or not, and uh, what's going on. So uh, now we g get all this. Uh, uh, this is a very simple statistical na analysis, just t-test, uh, but you can do a more advanced, it's more uh, multivariate analysis and visualization using a metabolic analyst. Uh, to do this one, uh, you need to format the output to, uh, to be compatible with the required by metabolic analyst. Uh, this is a uh, if you guys use metabolic analyst before, and this is a very general uh, f uh, format. Basically, you want all your peaks or features in rows and uh, the samples in columns. Uh, because you want to do analysis, uh, you need to let the program know what's the pro group la label. So in, uh, although the data already have the samples and features, you need to add this group labels. Basically, to tell which group is, uh, uh, sorry, which sample is from uh, uh, knockout which samples from wild type. So uh, you can save it and manually insert it using Excel or spreadsheet. But uh, here uh, for this exercise, this sample label is, uh, is uh, you can get a sample label called a phenol data from this uh, uh, XMS object. You'll get these uh, uh, class labels. Now you, you can combine these labels together with the peak intensities tables, then you just save as a CSV file. Then this, this file can be directly used on the uh, We You can try it later uh, when in module seven. Okay. Yeah, up to that command, if uh, you save it to uh, my peak table dot CSV file, and if you open it in Excel, you actually are going to see the format like this. This is all um, your sample name. This is uh, knockout of 15, knockout 16, knockout 18. And this is the class uh, group label. This is A, B, O. In this case, it's just a knockout mutant. Now here's your picks. Uh, we don't know what it is because this is where we on target. We just get in all these uh, peak uh, locations uh, identified by their retention time and their uh, mass and retention time. And the, the value is there. The value is there. Integrated the original uh, raw peak area. This is uh, when we used. So this is uh, not absolute uh, quantification, it's just relative abundance. Uh, so you just uh, use this as uh, relative abundance to uh, do the uh, statistical analysis. <coughs> so um, uh, uh, a lot of peaks can be a false positive and have low qualities, even XCMS uh, try to do its best. It's it's bad to visualize and what's what's the quality of the pigs, what's the real or not. Uh, so it's bad to visualize the pigs. So uh, you can do it with uh, uh, within uh, XMS. So uh, uh, we already did this before. So uh, this is the object we get, we return from uh, your previous an analysis. If you give this command called groups, it will give you all these uh, uh, groups, 
these peaks. And uh, if you really find uh, some peaks, uh, you see you want to find a peaks uh, with a particular retention time and uh, mass range. You just give this. Uh, it just you can explicitly ask for that. Basically, retention time at least uh, twenty six hundred. I don't know seconds, and uh, um, uh, with this. Uh, uh, but less than 2,700, and uh, uh, with uh, peaks uh, show up all 12 samples, or at least eight samples if you want to change. And you'll get uh, uh, multiple hits. So the, the last one is, uh, is one, basically. I just want to get the first uh, number of first hits. Then you just uh, use a get EIC uh, for this index, then you just plot them. Now you're going to get, uh, get your get your peaks like this, uh, colored by different uh, uh, colored by different uh, uh, class labels. So uh, one class will be uh, red, the other one's uh, uh, black. So, but uh, you you can really just uh, change this parameter to whatever uh, peaks you find is interesting because you know what these peaks looks like, uh, they, they, where it's located. If you find it significant, you can always just address this one to narrow it down and uh, just visualize it. So, so uh, I hope it covers all the basics, how you just uh, uh, get rid of your peaks, align your peaks, and uh, visualize your peaks, and do the basic statistical analysis. Uh, but XCMS is very flexible and uh, can, because open source has really been adapted to uh, work on very different scenarios. And so um, for this more, more detailed uh, discussing about what we've already been covered, discussed today, but this gives you more theoretical background, you can go to this uh, uh, menu. It will give you more detailed uh, stuff. But I found this quite useful is here. And uh, uh, you go to this forum and people, this, this forum is quite active and people just uh, upload their code and uh, talk, uh, discuss their issues and uh, uh, application to some novel field and, uh, and uh, the authors and some senior users try to help as best as uh, possible. So just go here and uh, read what's been done. If you think your issue is novel, never been touched, you just post your uh, questions and people will try to help you. So just um, keep in mind, and XMs can also do a tandem MS, and uh, uh, there's a recent one, it's called a Meta XMS, really just combine uh, multiple uh, experiments to, to do the uh, analysis. And uh, finally, if you use XMS and you think it's fine and you get your parameter right, and you just don't want to run it yourself, you can really upload, it's called XMS online, and they have a huge server. Just upload your file there, and they will probably return the result next day. But make sure you, you, you can play with it, I'll know what's the best parameter for your uh, file. Then you can just select and click, click button hit, and the, the, they will do a best job for you. OK, it's done. And uh, yeah, you, now you can just uh, practice and try to follow the uh, Example: Download the code, copy and paste, and see what you get. And if you have questions, I'm glad to answer any of that. <laughs>